What's up everyone, it's Thomas with Real Broker here in St. Augustine, Florida. And in today's video, we are going to do a map tour. So I'm gonna to be sharing my screen. I'm gonna be covering everything in St. John's County. And I'm gonna base it off of the, the questions that I typically get or the, the requests of what people really want in terms of their move here to St. John's County. So whether you're looking at the 20 minutes to the beach area or you wanna be a short commute to Jack's maybe for work or for other reasons, or if you're looking for the most affordable areas in in St. John's County, this video is gonna be the video that you wanna make sure that you check out. Before we get started, I wanna make sure to also let you know that I do have a Facebook page you can join. It has this symbol on it as well. It's Living in St. Augustine. So it's at www.facebook.com slash living in St. Augustine.com or living in St. Augustine. You can go on there and you can ask questions, get involved with the community, and you're not getting answers straight from me, a realtor, right? Who has some skin in the game in terms of you moving here to the area. So it's really great to get to know um, if you have any questions or have, have some other people answer those questions aside from myself. Also, I do have a newsletter, and if you want to join on that newsletter, it goes out twice a week, and it gives you all the pertinent information that you need to know if you're looking to buy, sell, or invest here in northeastern Florida, and a lot of that covers my live streams that go over on Wednesday. I include the links, and it's sent right to your inbox just for you to have it every single week so that you can be more informed and make better decisions for your move here within St. John's County, or if you're moving out of state to our area, it's just going to help you be more educated in this decision and in this process. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started by looking at the 20 minutes from the beach areas, right? Because that's something that when you're moving to Florida, you want to have the sun, the sand, you want to be on the beach, then we'll check out some of these areas here. So I'm going to share my screen here and we'll take a look at this. Boom. Okay, give it one second. There we go. Okay, so just to give you a quick overview of St. John's County, um, this is where it's located. We are here in northeastern Florida. So if you're familiar with the city of Jacksonville or Duval County, we are just south of that. And we're just north of Flagler County, uh, city of Palm Coast is there as well. Um, just north of that. And then we are east of Putnam County. This is where Palatka is over here and east of Clay County, just north over here. Uh, so just to give you a good idea, obviously, this is the main area of St. Augustine, of St. John's County is going to be St. Augustine, St. Augustine Beach and Volano Beach. Uh, really, past these, you know, let's say the, the last 20 years, we've seen a lot of development in the northern part of St. John's County, but St. Augustine, downtown St. Augustine, it's the nation's oldest city. This is where this is going to be located at. A lot of the development back in the day, like within the past, you know, 50 to 70 years, is going to be happening in that St. Augustine Beach and Volano Beach area. Um, so, of course, if you're looking for oceanfront property, if you're looking for intercoastal property, this is going to be your area to look, right? Um, and downtown St. Augustine is also extremely beautiful. You do have some intercoastal front properties there with boat docks uh, to go out into the water. Of course, it is tidal, so you need to know when the tides are coming in and out to be able to get in and get, get off your boat lift into the water and get back on your boat lift. But you don't want to get stuck out there in the middle of the day like I did. Um, but St. Augustine is the nation's oldest city. It was originally established by the Spanish. Of course, before that, there was a, a large Native American uh, population here. So not only do we have Native American history, we have um, you know United States history, we have Spanish history, we also have Black history here. Uh, St. Augustine was one of the first places after the Civil War uh, where Black people could purchase a home. Um, there was a, a section here in downtown St. Augustine, once called Little Africa, now it's called Lincolnville. Um, where a, a lot of black people moved here because they wanted to buy homes after the Civil War. Um, also, Fort Mose was one of the forts that defended uh, the Castillo de San Marcos, which is one of the forts that the Spanish built back in the day. Uh, fort Mose was the fort that uh, the Spanish allowed black and Native Americans to live at. Just north of the fort, uh, <laughs> they were the first line of defense. Obviously not the best thing to hear. Uh, but that's that's the history of this area, right? So even down here in Crescent Beach, if you're looking to get one of the uh, best views of sunset, really, you have Matanzas Inlet right here. So you can go out to the water. It is really sketchy out there. I wouldn't recommend that. If you're going to go out to the water for, on a boat, you definitely want to go out this section over here. Uh, but over here, it can be very sketchy, but it still is nonetheless an inlet. 
Um, and they have Fort Matanzas right down here as well. But Matanzas means murder, right? So it's Matanzas Inlet, murder inlet. And that's because there was a slaughter of Native Americans by, I believe, the French or the Spanish. I think maybe it was the Spanish because it is Spanish. Not a history major here, guys. I am a realtor. Uh, right over here um, on this Matanzas Inlet. So and you can see Matanzas State Forest. So amongst our, our area, you're going to have a lot of history, which is fantastic to do, especially if you have kids. I'm a big history nerd, too. So I, I really enjoy those kind of things. Uh, just learning about our past and, and where we've really come from, right? Um, so let's take a, let's talk let's take a look at the major attractions here in St. Augustine. So the main thing is going to be St. Augustine Beach, right? So St. Augustine Beach is going to be on Anastasia Island, which is the area we were just talking about, and then you have the fishing pier right here. This area of St. Augustine Beach is going to tend to be more touristy. You will find some single-family communities that um, you know they're not really available to rent out within the city of St. Augustine. They did put a, um, a cap on how many short-term rentals you could have in the city of St. Augustine Beach. Um, but that since I think has been removed because it, uh, the state of Florida deemed it unconstitutional uh, or whatever. I'm, I'm not exactly sure the, Florida, the state of Florida said you can't do it anymore. Um, aside from that, you also have the St. Augustine Lighthouse and Maritime Museum. Great little place to go. You can get an annual pass for like 25 bucks, climb the lighthouse, take a look at all of downtown St. Augustine, the intercoastal, the ocean. It's really, really beautiful. Uh, downtown St. Augustine, now you're going to have homes down here that were built in the colonial quarter, right? So hundreds of hundreds of years ago, St. Augustine was established in 1565 by the Spanish, um, and of course, Native Americans before that. And then you have Castillo de San Marco right there which is right on the waterfront here, protecting the city of St. Augustine uh, from any potential invaders. Um, aside from that, we also have the St. Augustine Amphitheater, which a lot of people don't know about, but we actually set, uh, sell more tickets at the St. Augustine Amphitheater than Red Rocks. Now, of course, you're like, how, how do I, I've never heard of this place. How do they sell more tickets than Red Rocks? It's like the most popular amphitheater in the United States. We're also open year round, right? Whereas can't really do that in Colorado, Colorado because it is so cold. Uh, whereas here, you can do it because right now it's, uh, I think it's like 70 degrees outside, you know, and it's January. Uh, so you, you're still able to, to go out and have fun. And they get some great acts over here at St. Augustine Amphitheater. Uh, now, just to give you another couple of geographic landmarks over here. So we're sandwiched between, uh, you, have, you have the Atlantic Ocean here, then you have the intercoastal right here. Um, and then you also have the St. John's River on the west, which separates the counties here, right? So the St. John's River is also a great place. It's not tidal like uh, the intercoastal is, but you'll see a lot of people going out there boating and hanging out, um, going fishing out there. Bass Pro was talking about putting a fishing resort down here in Wheelocka. Uh, let me find it right down here. Um, and Wheelocka has a town of about 700 people, one stoplight and two sheriffs. So it's going to definitely change that area. Um, so if you're a boater or a fisher, that's a great place to go. Now, let's talk about the median price point for this area. Now, St. John's County has changed drastically since the pandemic. A lot of places have, right? I'm sure where you live, the pandemic has changed the pricing and who's lived there, who's moved out, all that kind of stuff. Um, it, it really put things in a lot of perspective for people. So St. John's County, St. Augustine is no different. Now, the median sale price within St. Augustine is going to be around 550,000. The average is actually going to be around 650,000. So, and that's a huge increase from five years ago. Our, our housing prices have gone up 60% since 2018, which is a big clip, right? And wages haven't necessarily gone up like that <laughs> pretty much anywhere in the United States, but especially here in St. John's County. Now, that being said, um, there is no industry here in St. John's County. The major employer in St. John's County is going to be the government. It's mostly uh, public schools. And the one thing that we can really hang our hat here in St. John's County is that we have one of the best public school districts in the entire state of Florida, where I think we ranked number two this year, um, where we've ranked number one consistently for years and years before that. Um, but now we're number two, which is still not a bad. It's, like, it's not a bad, um, especially when you're considering the whole state. We're doing that. We're doing that well. Um, if you're looking for schools, right, 70% of the schools in St. John's County are going to be A-rated schools. So you pretty much every school is going to be a good school. I think we only have one school that's rated a C school, which, uh, you know, it, C is still not, you know, I got C. C's get degrees, right? Um, so still not a bad place to be. But just to cover that, 
slightly and we'll go into the next news story here or the next the next thing we need to talk about uh which is going to be the 20 minutes from the beach right a lot of people that are moving to our area that's a big deal for them they want to be close to the beach because it's the lifestyle of living here in st john's county but living in florida in general no one wants to really move to the center of florida and be two hours away from the beach um that being said that is a good part about living anywhere in florida is that you're about you know an hour drive from the beach almost anywhere you go. And if you don't really go to the beach that often, uh, it's not that big of a deal, right? Um, and for myself, um, me and my wife go to the beach, you know, maybe once a month. Um, and here in St. Augustine, you're able to drive on the beach. But where we live, we're about 15 minutes from the beach. Uh, so it's not too big of a deal for us to just, hey, you know what, we'll load up the truck, we'll load up the dogs, we'll drive down to the beach, we'll drive on the beach. I'm I'm white as a ghost, so I need to have a canopy. I got to wear a long sleeve shirt, all that good stuff. Um, so if we're spending the day there, I need to pack a canopy. I need to pack my chairs. I got to have a setup out there, you know, so I can chill out, hang out for a couple hours. Um, so let's go into the 20 minutes to the beach, right? Because that's the biggest thing. Now, obviously, I'm not going to cover, you know, if you're living on, on the east side of the intercoastal, you're going to be minutes to the beach. You could walk to the beach in many cases, uh, ride a bike to the beach, whatever that is. But if you're looking to be 20 minutes to the beach, the rule of thumb, I would say, is sticking to the east of 95. Anything past that, you're just going to have to deal with traffic and fight your way over back to the beach. So just to give you a couple ideas here, um, like St. Augustine South here, this is a great no HOA community. I'm a big fan of this community. I put a couple of families in there and they enjoy it a lot. Uh, it has two public boat ramps that are maintained by the county. So if you wanted to get out into the river and the Matanzas, the intercoastal, and if you wanted to go out deep sea fishing, you could definitely do that if you got a big enough boat. Um, but St. Augustine South, just from this location to the beach, we'll just do the directions here. Um, St. Augustine South. Hopefully that'll pop. Yep. Okay. So you're going to be about 15 minutes to the beach with uh, the traffic right here. And this is going to be US 1 and 312, which is going to be a major intersection here because that's the main get off of most of the people here on the island. Aside from that, you do also have 206 south of here, but you do also have the Lions Bridge over here as well, which is going to take you um, a little bit longer because this is the main tourist area up in this neck of the woods. Um, and this bridge is only a two lane, two lane bridge. So you have traffic one lane going this way, one go, one lane going the other opposite way. Um, and you have a whole bunch of tourism in that area. So you'll see traffic sometimes backed up to the lighthouse during night of lights during summertime, um, which is very, very annoying. There's actually a uh, bumper sticker that people sell here locally that says, please don't make me cross the bridge because it can be that big of a pain. It'll, it'll take your 20 minute commute into a 40 minute commute uh, if you choose to go that way. So myself, I live over here in the West Augustine area. The West Augustine area is going to be about a 15 minute drive either to St. Augustine Beach or Volano Beach, right? And this is this area here, Volano Beach. This is Porpoise Point right down here. Uh, the great thing about this area is that you can go over here. I mean, if you if you can hang out on the beach all day, I can't. I, I don't have the skin for it. I you know I get skin cancer in ten minutes. Um, you can go from the beach, staying on the beach, hanging out, and then just walk around the, the the end here, and then you can catch sunset. So sunrise over here at the beach, and then sunset over the intercoastal over downtown St. Augustine, and then also within Porpoise Point over here, you have a whole bunch of like tide pools and everything. So like if you have kids or a dog and you just want to chill out and not be in the waves, it's a great area to be as well because it's a lot more calm than you know the ocean side is because that's where a lot of people go surfing and everything. Because we do have a good bit of swell here, um, not as big as like California or anything, but. Um, I have seen where, you, you know, certain days where we have a storm surge coming through, you'll have a six foot storm surge uh, overhead, which is uh, pretty significant if you're a surfer. Um, but we'll keep on moving along here. So uh, that is one of the communities to check out. Pretty much anything that you're going to look at on the east side of 95 in this little corridor is going to be about 20 minutes from the beach, maybe 25 minutes, depending on how deep you are in the community. Um, but that's that's just something to keep in mind. Now, if you're going into the northern part of St. John's County, um, you may have heard of Nocatee. Nocatee is a master plan community. It's a, rated by the uh, niche.com, the number one community in the entire state of Florida. Average sale price here is probably north of $800,000. Um, it, it has a water park. It's got a, a, a zip line running through it, lazy river. It's amazing. It's a great little community. But that being said, 
it's not exactly the easiest to get to the beach. Now, the main beach here, even though it is spelled, um, sorry, I, I spelled how I was thinking. Uh, even though it is spelled Micklers, right, it's actually Michlers. And that's something that locals will let you know if you get it wrong. And I've even said it wrong on videos and people are like, hey, you don't know what you're talking about. It's Michlers. And it's like, yeah, I literally got in an argument with a kid on the school bus when I was uh, in elementary school. Uh, about the pronunciation of it because, you know, I, I took basic English, you know, and that's not how you pronounce Micklers, right? But for the people here that are locals, it is Michlers. Now, just to give you an idea here in Nocatee, that says that it's an 11 minute drive to the beach. Now, Nocatee is a huge community, right? This is the front entrance of Nocatee. It's got a, this is Nocatee Parkway here, which is a highway that runs through it. It's so big. Um, you, you can be back in the, in the depths of Nocatee, right? And it's one of those communities where there's a whole bunch of winding roads, right? And it's beautiful, it's picturesque. Um, but for me, that drives me nuts. Like if I'm going to the front of my community, I wanna get to my house, right? Here, if you get to the front of Nocatee, it could take you an additional 10 to 15 minutes to get to your house based on where you live within Nocatee, just because of, of how, how massive this community is. It's, uh, I think it's 26 square miles and, um, yeah, you, with, with how the layout is, it could just take you a while to get back there. A whole bunch of roundabouts and everything. But nonetheless, for the most part, if you're in Nocatee over here, you're going to be about a 20-minute commute to Micklers. Now, we're going to have a whole bunch of communities based off of here, right? North of 16 and south of Nocatee, not Nocatee, Nocatee Parkway, right? Uh, so Cordova Palms is over here. Palencia is over here. Um, Wells Creek is just north of over here. Um, and then they also have off of here, they have Beacon Lake, uh, Beach Walk, all off of 210, which are new construction communities, which are also extremely beautiful. Um, but if you're looking to go to the beach from those locations, then it is going to take you a little bit longer, right? If you're in Palencia, Palencia is another community. It's been developed for a long time. It's older than Nocatee, um, but it's right. Oh, that's not what we want. There we go. Yeah, if you're driving from Spain, it's gonna take you a while. So this is from the uh, Palencia Club, which is where their, their main amenities are, their fitness center, all that kind of stuff, right here in Palencia. Um, so if I zoom in here, you can see that it's kind of in the middle of Palencia. Palencia goes you know, back and around here, goes down and around. Once again, another area with winding roads and stuff like that. So if you're coming from the front of the community, it's gonna take you a little bit north of 26 minutes right? Because of just how the traffic is over here um, and, and how long it takes. Now, of course, you can go up there to Michler's Landing, but you could also go down to Volano Beach, which might take you about the same time. Let's see here. Okay, so it's negligible. You know, really, it just depends on which beach you like better, right? If I'm, if I'm choosing, I would probably go to Michler's just because uh, I would say that with Michler's Beach over here, oh, where are we at? Yeah, Michler's Beach is like right over here. Um, you also have the Guana River Preserve, which is a, a beautiful area to go if you like kayaking, if you just want to take a hike through the woods and the, the, the marsh area. They have a ton of availability to do that. It's very, very cool. Um, so that being said, let's go ahead and talk about another reason that people want to move to our area and especially in the northern part of St. Johns County. Now, Prior to the pandemic, we were seeing a boom in the north part of St. Johns County just because people wanted to live in St. Johns County, get access to the, the, the better schools that we have here than what are available in Duval County, but they still commuted to work. They went to Duval County, just Jacksonville, Duval County uh, for work, but also for fun too. Jack's Beach is a great place to hang out. You also have the Jaguars up north. Um, you also have um, the Jacksonville uh, Shrimp as well. Um, baseball is a minor league baseball team. Um, and now they're even talking about adding a soccer team, um, which might be housed in St. John's County. We'll see, and I'll stay on top of that for you guys, um, which is a good reason to follow my newsletter or join the Facebook page, because I'll post all that stuff over there. Um, but uh, we were already seeing development happening in the northern part of St. John's County because of the easy access to Jacksonville and the, the, the higher paying jobs the industry that Jacksonville has to offer, right? Jacksonville is known for uh, transportation, right? It's a, it's a large transloading hub. Um, and that's because when you look at a map, I-10 is the only highway that goes from 
East Coast to West Coast. You can go all the way to California on I-10. You can also get on 95 really easy, and then you can go all the way north, right? So a lot of things were originally going into Miami, which is further south than us. It's about like a six-hour drive south of us. Um, so opposed to doing that, they come into the port at Jacksonville, and then they can ship things very easily across the entire country. Um, so now we're starting to see more and more ships come into Jacksonville. On top of that, you also have military bases in Jacksonville. You have two large military bases. Uh, it's also a large finance hub as well. And we're also starting to see uh, FinTech join in on that as well over in Jacksonville. And then we also have um, the healthcare industry as well, which is booming in Jacksonville. So my point is with that is that a lot of people don't work in St. John's County. A lot of people either work remotely now or they're commuting to Jacksonville for their work. So if you're looking to cut down on your commute, you're going to be wanting to look in the northern part of St. John's County. Now, pop this out here. Now, and I think this is a good a good way to look at it, right? I, you know, I'm not a master at this, but in terms of transportation, right here is a International Golf Parkway, right? So if you've ever driven on 95, you've probably seen the World Golf Hall of Fame. This area here is known as World Golf Village, um, which the World Golf Hall of Fame is no longer at. So they're going through a little bit of identity crisis. But uh, I think pretty much so where we covered before Palencia, as you come out here, you're going to see new construction communities like Silverleaf, Shearwater, you have Rivertown over here. Um, all of these areas here are probably going to be about a 30 minute commute from downtown Jacksonville or Southside Jacksonville, not downtown. Let's do, well, let's just do downtown Jacksonville and we'll do directions to, and we'll pick, um, let's say world, we'll do the King and the Bear, which is a big community in St. John's County. Okay, so to downtown Jacksonville, you're sub an hour. Now, of course, we do have some traffic right now based on what time it is. Um, looks like there's an accident over here or something like that to get to downtown Jacksonville. Your biggest, the biggest time here is probably going to get to 95, right? Getting over to 95 from this King of the Bear community, probably going to be about 15 minutes of this drive and then 30 minutes on 95 North. So once you hit 95, it's a breeze to get anywhere. Um, but just getting over to this, this, uh, this road here is going to be your biggest struggle pretty much anywhere across here. And the reason for that is because we've had such massive development, such an influx of people, so much new construction building that the infrastructure in a lot of these areas is starting to catch up. Now, they've, they've had these plans to build all these things, but with the influx of people from the pandemic, they haven't been really on top of all that stuff. So one of the things you'll see um, is off of 210 here. Now, 210 is a major, major highway that runs through, it runs east and west, right? So you, it connects into Nakati Parkway, Beacon Lake, Beach Walk is over here, and it goes out here. You have Lenar, Stillwater, Shearwater, a whole bunch of communities, master plan communities that are based off of this here. They're starting to widen this road right now. If you go on the east side of 95, this is a total mess. It really is. They've been doing construction. They've been adding um, rental housing over there. And it's been, uh, it, I go up there a good bit just for work, but also Culver's is up there. Some great burgers up in Culver's. Uh, it's like fast food, but it's like Chick-fil-A of burgers is what I, what I call it. Um, Quality is great. But either way, because of all the construction, because of all the new roads and everything, people kind of don't know where to go, right? And it's, it's a little difficult getting around there. But in the future, they are widening that road. I don't foresee that being a problem for a long, long time. They're doing all the work right now, but just so you know. Now, so to get over to Jacksonville and to get to Jacksonville Beach, now let's say that you were at Beach Walk, right? And Beach Walk, or let's do Beacon Lake. It's right across the street. Beacon Lake, it's right over here, right off of 210. This is deep in Beacon Lake. That's the amenity center there. Um, it's got a beautiful lake, which is in the name. Um, but let's take a look. We'll go over to Jack's Beach. So Jacksonville Beach is a great place to hang out. Um, you know, it's very city-like in that area. But you have two options. You either go the A1A route, which is going to be more of your scenic route, or you can go over here to 202 and then head right over east to Jacksonville Beach. So if you're looking for bars, restaurants, hanging out on the beach and be able to take a walk somewhere, Jacksonville Beach is going to be your main area, right? It's going to be about a 30-minute drive. So really... Anywhere in Jacksonville, and if you're living that far north, it's going to be about a 30 to 45 minute drive. So if you needed to get to JIA, which is Jacksonville International Airport, they just announced that they're going to be doing flights from Jacksonville to San Diego 
uh, nonstop, which is pretty cool because that, that wasn't something before. It's going to take you about 45 minutes to get there. And that's not bad at all um, in terms of your commute uh, to get up to Jacksonville International Airport. Now, this, of course, is with a little bit of traffic over here. I typically get to go from, from my house here. Let's see here if that'll pull. Yeah. So I live right over here. Typically, it now says an hour and 20. It has never taken me an hour and 20 to get up there. It takes me 50 minutes to get to my house, to Jacksonville International Airport. So the main thing is getting to 95. And once you're on 95, every, you know, the speed limit reads 70, but people drive 95. They, they drive like it is uh, 95 miles per hour. So if you are looking to commute to Jacksonville, if you're looking to be closer to a metropolitan area, if you want new construction, then you want to be looking in the northern part of St. John's County. Not to mention, they also have all brand new schools, all brand new commercial development. So all of your retail, you know, if you want to go to the nail salon, you want to go to the restaurant, everything within the northern part of St. John's County, for the most part, is brand new. And that's because it's all developing around the new construction developments that have been spurring up for the past couple of the yeah. past couple. All these things have been in the works for years and years and years. Developers of this have bought land years ago, but because of the spur of the influx of people moving in here, everything's just moved a lot faster than I think anyone expected. So uh, brand new schools, brand new houses, um, brand new commercial space, new roads, everything's going into this area. And when it's all built out, it's gonna be very, very sweet. I think it's gonna be a great place to live. It's already a great place to live. I just like to point out some of the negatives, right? Um, so let's go ahead and we'll hop on to the next thing, right? Which is what areas are going to be the most affordable areas to live in, right? Now, it used to be all of St. John's County. Anyone moving here would be like, dang, this place is affordable. Now, if you're moving from, you're moving from California, you're moving from New York, you're moving from Washington, Seattle, um, all these places where the, the housing prices or New Jersey, maybe the taxes are much higher, right, than what we offer here in St. John's County, then St. John's County is still going to be a deal for you. But to give you an idea, most people work here in government. They're making about $50,000 a year per individual, right? So buying a $550,000 house at $50,000 a year, let's say you have a spouse or at 100, you got to be doing everything right. You got to have perfect credit. You got to have a huge down payment. It, it, it really makes it difficult for the people that were living here, the locals, right? Um, with this influx of people moving because of the pandemic, right? And things just changed so fastly um, that... Uh, so fast, not fastly. I don't know. So things just change so fast that really the 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 layman, the local, they've gotten lost in this transition, right? They're they're having a hard time. Affordable housing is one of the biggest tickets for St. John's County to cover. But nonetheless, if you are looking for affordable housing, I'm going to show you a couple different areas here, and also why I think that you should buy there or invest, or if you want to sell, either one. I'm going to cover all of that, right? So let me share my screen here and we'll take a look at that. Okay, so we're back here in St. John's County. Now, if you're in the Northern part of St. John's County, this is really gonna be tough to find affordable housing. There's really nothing North of State Road 16 that you're gonna find that's going to be affordable, right? And what, what do I consider affordable? I'm gonna say that's gonna be about $200,000 less than the median sale price. So let's talk about $350,000 houses. Now, the good thing is that a lot of these areas surround the main part of St. Augustine, right? Which is something that I really enjoy. And that's why I bought a house in West Augustine, right? So West Augustine is, um, I have a video on it as well, which I can, uh, I can put in the link above, but West Augustine is this section right here. So you have State Road 207, this has an on-ramp to 95. You have State Road 16, this has an on-ramp to 95. Um, and then you have 214 here, which I imagine eventually as West Augustine begins to develop more, we will see an on-ramp onto 95 eventually. But as of right now, this is the pocket that I would call West Augustine. It's west of US 1, west of downtown St. Augustine. Um, and in this area here, the average sale price is gonna be around 300 to $350,000. And that's because a lot of the housing in this area is either gonna be brand new, or it's going to be a older home that needs a good bit of work, right? And you can even find homes sub 300,000. Now within St. John's County, just to give you an idea, there's a uh, look the other day, so maybe it's eight now, maybe it's six, I don't know. 
Um, but there were only seven homes that were below $300,000 that were single family homes here in St. Johns County. So are there opportunities for um, condos and townhomes under 300,000? 100%, but for a single family home, you're gonna be looking pretty much north of $300,000 all in St. Johns County. So West Augustine here, one of my favorite communities. Um, it, for me, uh, the, the reason I love it, the reason I bought here is because a lot of the zoning here is RS3, which allows you to um, rent out your home on the nightly. So when I do move out of this house, I can make it an Airbnb, which is my goal to build an investment uh, property, right? Um, investment property portfolio. Um, and then also if you're on, so the city of St. Augustine is right here, downtown St. Augustine. They have one of the highest tax bases within St. John's County. It's like 1.9% of your purchase price. So if you buy a $100,000 house, your taxes are gonna be roughly $1,900 a year. Um, now there's no $100,000 houses here in St. Augustine. So don't get too excited. Now on the other side of this train tracks, the city of St. Augustine covers this whole area as well. So the taxes in this area are higher than the taxes on the other side of this train tracks here. My taxes are about 1.23%, right? So that's a, a considerable drop in my annual cost to own a home. Um, but uh, the reason I like this area, I can jog downtown. I'm a mile from downtown St. Augustine. We had, they had the St. Francis Field. We had the Sing Out Loud Festival. The Black Keys played. Uh, Mumford and Sons played. A whole bunch of other bands played. And we were able to walk there. It took me 25 minutes to walk there, right? I don't mind walking. I enjoy it. Um, but some people don't like that. I like a walkable community. I want to be able to go to the grocery store. I want to be able to grab a, a you know, a, a sandwich or a, a drink at the corner store. I want to be able to walk downtown and I'm able to do that without the prices of downtown St. Augustine, right? Because if you're on the intercoastal here, you're paying millions of dollars. If you're inside here, you're paying 500,000. Um, if you're up north here, you're paying 500,000. If you're over here, you're just, a, you're, you're just a clip away. You're, you're spending way less, right? And th this is, why I like this area a lot. And then also your 15 minutes to the beach, your 10 minutes to the amphitheater, 10 minutes to the lighthouse. You have everything at your fingertips. This is one of my favorite communities in St. Augustine. Now, the reason I think you should buy here, if you are interested in affordable communities and also trying to build a little bit of wealth for yourself, um, it all goes back to what I said earlier. The average person here in St. John's County makes $50,000. This was a neighborhood that people did not want to live before. Now, because of the change of pricing here in the area, they really don't have much of a choice to be able to pick there or pick one of the other communities that we're going to cover here in just a second. So it's either you live in West Augustine, you live in Hastings, Flagler Estates, St. Augustine South, a little bit St. Augustine South, St. Augustine Shores. That's pretty much what people are limited to if you are looking to be sub $400,000, right? So let me go ahead and share my screen so that if you're making $50,000 a year, you can't really afford much more, right, than that area. And if you are looking to buy, if you are younger, you're more than likely working in the hospitality industry, which is, you know, in, in reality, it is the biggest industry aside from government because of all the small restaurants. Now they can't really report it as like this massive employer, but that's the truth of it. So let me share my screen again and we'll go on to the next place. Um, so take a look here. All right, so let's follow US 1 South. Now we touched on this neighborhood, St. Augustine South. At, at the cheapest, you're gonna be able to find a home in the low 300s, but they go all the way up to 500. You know, they have million dollar houses that are right over here as well. Um, so it has a good bit of, uh, of spread in terms of the pricing there, but most of the homes you're gonna find are gonna be between 350 and $550,000, right? So not exactly the most affordable area, but it's close to everything right over here, right? So you get over here, you can go to the beach in 15 minutes, downtown St. Augustine in 10 minutes, you go to the amphitheater in 10 minutes, all your grocery, you got Publix right over here, you got Walmart right over here, access to that. Also amongst this intersection here, you have one of the best gyms in the area. Bailey's is right here. That's where I go to the gym, 10 minutes away from my house. Uh, Flagler Hospital is also over here. So you're just close to everything. And you also have four miles of intercoastal that you can walk and you have two boat ramps within this community, right? Now, the one negative about this neighborhood here is that it is a septic community. So if you're not familiar with the septic, most people here in Florida are, but if you are relocating here, you're probably not. Uh, this is going to be the community for you, right? Or, or it won't be the community for you if you're not familiar with it and you don't like it. But uh, opposed to having public sewer, you have a septic tank. Now, 
Let's move on to St. Augustine Shores. St. Augustine Shores, another community which um, at one point a lot of people didn't want to live in, but now because of pricing and everything, uh, it's, it's one of the more affordable areas, um, uh, communities in our area. And this is an HOA community. So St. Augustine Shores, your HOA is like $30 a month. It's really not that bad. So it's, it's an older developed HOA community. And you have parts of the shores where you can find houses in the high 200s, right? And you can find houses in the 500s. It just really depends what you're looking for. That's going to be more of a new construction house with a pool maybe. Um, and then the, you know, the, the two high 200s is going to be a smaller house um, that, you know, the, the layout's a little bit wonky maybe. But the one great thing, and I have several friends that live here in St. Augustine Shores, is that it's it's very developed, right? And you still have the access of getting to downtown St. Augustine. It takes you a little bit longer to get to the beach. Um, all your shopping here is on US 1. You got Publix right out here as well. So it's very convenient to everything that you need um, without the price tag, right? So the one great thing is that Amongst this, you can see they have waterways and lakes and all that kind of stuff through there. They have walking trails and it looks very developed. There's parts of it that look like Central Park. And I'm not even like joking. Like my buddy, he uh, he does a lot of Frisbee golf, right? So, you know, I'm not sure if you ever heard of that, but it's like golf with a Frisbee, if you didn't get it from the name. Um, but man, some of the, they have a Frisbee golf, um, what do they call it, course throughout St. Augustine Shores. My buddy goes and plays all the time. And I think that's awesome, right? And gone out there and looked at like some of these places and it's just it's beautiful it's serene you can run up and down the water and all that kind of stuff i i really enjoy it they also have canopy shores park and they also have a pier that goes out here to the intercoastal that you have access to because of your hoa so i definitely think that is a good good place to look if you're looking to be 20 minutes to the beach right now let's check out the other communities here so as you go further further west on 207 here we're seeing a lot of development on 207 between us1 and 95 tons of new construction communities dorado at entrada they build homes somewhere between like the 350 and 500,000 range new construction um but you go down here and you'll get into elkton you'll get into hastings uh this area over here flagler estates this is where you're going to find a lot of bang for your buck now this is definitely going to be more rural right this is going to be from Hastings to downtown St. Augustine, you probably have about a 30 minute drive, right? So let's just take a look here. Yeah, 35 minute drive, and that's with a little bit of traffic. Um, and of course, if we're at rush hour where people are getting off of 95 to get on um, to 207, that's probably gonna increase. Like I said, this area has developed a good bit. Now, if you're going to St. Augustine Beach, take you about 35 minutes by the way of 206 if you're in the town of Hastings. So 206, this is actually a beautiful drive, wooded, um, serene drive right down here up until you get to 95 really, um, then down across to Crescent Beach. And Crescent Beach is my favorite beach in the area, hands down. Uh, it's a lot bigger and most of the area is like private for because they have the, the beachfront homes, but then you also have townhome communities, condo communities, um, and then you can also drive on the beach there. So like that's where I tend to go. So take a look here and we'll, we'll take a look at this as well so flagler estates now flagler estates is just south of hastings and it's going to take you about 35 minutes to get to the beach but if you were to go to jacksonville say we're going to jacksonville international airport probably about an hour and a half yep probably about an hour and a half and that's because uh, flagler estates is out there right so you got to drive in some country roads up to 07 in hastings and then you got to get to 95 and then you're going to go up from 95 all the way through Jacksonville. So it's gonna take you a good bit to get all the way out there. Um, and, and some people really enjoy that. You know, Some people want to have that country lifestyle. In Flagler Estates, you can buy an acre of land for about twenty to $30,000. You can build a house, roughly, let's say about 150 to $200 a square foot. You could be all in with a new construction house on a piece of land for like $350,000. You know, And that's not bad at all to have a brand new house. Um, so, that is going to be it guys in terms of our video for today 
Um, if you do have any questions about anything that I covered here, you can fire them off in the comments below. You can reach out to me directly. If you want to schedule an appointment with me, I have a Calendly link below. You can schedule a free 30-minute appointment with me. We'll go over everything that you need to know, uh, everything that you're looking to do here in our area, and I'd love to be able to help you out. We do also have that Facebook page. I have a newsletter that goes out. If you want to be a part of that, I'm not sending you spam every day. I'm not that type of person. Um, low pressure, no pressure sales tactics here, guys. I'm only here to help you when you're ready to make a decision. And my whole goal is to give you the information so that you can make an educated decision. Aside from that, I'm not going to be calling you, hey, you want to buy a house? Hey, you want to do this? I'm, I'm not that person at all. Um, unless we become friends, maybe then we'll do that. I don't know. But uh, so yeah, make sure you, if you want to get on the newsletter, reach out to me directly. We'll get you hooked up on the newsletter. If you don't want to do that, join our Facebook page. It's free. You can go check it out. You can get engaged with the community. You can ask people questions aside from myself. Um, and that's going to be about it, guys. So until next time, I'll catch you then. Um, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Make sure you like the video. If you comment, you help me out in the algorithm. If you subscribe, it does even better. So until next time, guys, I will see you.